Shout out to Long family. This is Francisco Perez. Welcome to another educational lesson. This is going to be about where I live, Hawaii. That's a pretty good one. I haven't gone over the video. This is just going to be on the whim, on the fly. We're going to find out a little bit about tactics of the oppressors, uh, how they twist your history and conceal it to eventually destroy it, erase it. This is real life, real time experience. We are covering the new documentary that came out. No Heaven. No further ado, let's get in the video. Holly is a word used to mean foreigner, but today we use it for white people. White people we call Haole, but it means foreigner. Anyone who's not of Hawaiian blood would be a Haole. Really means without breath, meaning you when you greeted people, you didn't use the breath to greet people. You shook their hands, so you were called Haole. Okay, Haole plover plundering the archipelagos of our world and we gorging ourselves on lost shells blowing a Taurus conch shell into the wounds of catastrophe from Haunani K. Trask's poem Hawaii This is Makua Valley. This is, remember when I, if you seen the video where I showed you the cave system. The first video I showed you on Hawaii's cave system. We went into a big cavern. On the left and the right, there were two corridors which took you further inside the mountain. But it was only big enough for a man. And <clears throat> it was really stink. And I didn't have my construction grade um, mask on. So I was like, okay, that's, that's you know, for get some kind of spores. But that's caverns. You can probably go back through those little corridors and it opens up into big caverns and big caves where we used to live, where we used to bury our dead, where we used to store food, all these different principles. This mountain, this is a valley. At the other end of this mountain that comes out by the ocean is that cave system. So this would have been uh, the place where the temples that had connection to those caves would have been or are right now. Okay, The people, the priests, the chiefs, they would have been located in this valley. The, the archaeological evidence still remains in this valley today. Makua Valley. Wait, hold up, my bad. Noho Eva. Makua Valley, the word Makua means parent. This is one of 26 military training sites on Oahu. So, there's 26 training sites. You have to understand that majority of these training sites are archaeological spots a lot of these parks a lot of these military um infrastructure a lot of a lot of these state parks and state buildings are on your archaeological sites and what they're doing is they're shooting depleted uranium shells so they're just irradiating the whole area so no matter what when they're done with it, you're never going to be able to use it. 
That's why the, the people living in the adjacent areas have small levels of radiation poison and they always get cancer in that area. sacred sites and endangered species habitats so what happened was they they accidentally make a fire see the thing you don't understand about the the u.s military um in um, hawaii is every day there's an accident with them but and 90 percent of the time they do not tell it so no one ever knows it so this time there was an accident where there's a fire and all of the archaeological sites have been burnt down. Was this on purpose or accident? And all of the endangered species that have survived the, the onslaught of occupiers trying to destroy the resources and the medicine of the people have all been but exterminated. So these are endangered species and it was all burnt down. Hawaiians gathered at Makua to pray for its recovery. They began with the Kanikau, a chant for the dead. So our ancestors that died crying for them. later the army was back in Makua conducting live fire ammunition. Well Ringing the Valley is a native forest that's home to 45 endangered species plants and animals but right there right on either side and in the midst of the trading area you've got literally hundreds of cultural sites. You've got petroglyphs, habitation sites. native forest that's home to 45 endangered species, plants and animals, but right there, right on either side and in the midst of the trading area, you've got literally hundreds of cultural sites. You've got petroglyphs, habitation sites, Ahu, Heiau. Uh, these are all irreplaceable cultural resources that we want to make sure that the Army takes extra care to make sure that they're not going to be damaged while they do their training. of this valley for any kind of training can be okay. I mean, there is no agreement that can make that okay. And the, the whole issue is returning Makua to the people. I mean, that has to be the focus, not controlling how the military uses it. This is just like crazy. Every one of these soldiers uh, will be at harm's way in a few months, either by deploying to Iraq or Afghanistan, each of which will be 12 month deployments for our soldiers in combat operations. We're used to shooting from uh, oxhole or shooting in a prone position. It's a little bit different and something we'll need to train up on since we're gonna deploy. Is this your first time doing that kind of an exercise? Uh, yes. yes. 
Did you think it was successful? Or? Yeah, it, it went pretty well overall. It was a good good exercise for all the, all the soldiers that haven't done it. It's good training because, you know, like I said, we're getting ready to deploy. It's been a while over three years now. You like it here? No, actually, I don't. I'm a city guy. It's going down over here. It's crazy. <laughs> The one more step closer to being uh, trained uh, and confident in their mission so that they're there to uh, to conduct their operations and save their lives and make sure that they all come back home safely to us. Well, the only thing that we got, it's going to be different in combat. You combat, if you come into contact once, there's a very good chance you can have it again. You're not just going to be like, all right, all, let's relax. I don't think I hit squat out there, but the fact that I was putting bullets down range, keeping heads down, keeping heads down so you mean, I had some guys been next to me that didn't fire their ammo and made the count, Well, I didn't have any good shots. It's like, open up both your eyes, look over the top of the weapon, and just get some fire down because, you know, if you're sitting there, if you've, I don't know if anyone's ever had the distinct pleasure of having them. You, know, you can hear like the zip and the crack of the bullets, and it scares the crap out of you. And so you're gonna get down. So you're moving, and then maybe your target's moving. Yeah. It's like good training. I don't know. I've never done it. That, that was, was the whole point. Really just, did you run out of ammo? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course you would. That's my favorite thing. All right, excellent. Any other points? Anybody thinks so? What we have learned is one of the most frequent enemy encounters today is uh, when our soldiers are traveling on the roadway. So we want to save their lives and make sure that they're trained uh, to be able to handle any type of situation. What will you do when the war is... The following month, soldiers from the division that trained during that week in Makua Valley, it's supposed to be Ma... Kua Valley, because the line over the A is meaning you extend the A. Ma Kua Valley. Shaha Saleh and two of her daughters as they planted peas near their home in northern Iraq. Dova. Tender comrade. A roadside bomb exploded near the infantry convoy lie down now, as it passed we through the village. Gone. The forty-two-year-old year widow and mother of fourteen ran daughters in the direction. Home one daughter was killed, the other left unable to walk, family. and one of Shala's legs had to be amputated from the knee. The soldier, the soldiers Looking perceived the, the women were threats based on their son. evasive actions. As of oh, August two thousand and nine, over five thousand military personnel had died. Over 20,000 Afghan Afghans have been killed. And the Iraqi death toll since the U.S. invasion is estimated to be over a million people. That is Heba, with so many people getting killed. And the U.S. military has also been Heva to us, overthrowing our native government in 1893, starting a huge military occupation in 1898, launching World War II and all of the other wars since then out of here, practicing to launch those wars out of sacred valleys like Makua. There's so much military here. I don't mean just that there's a military presence on the islands, that, that we've become so used to it that people in Hawaii don't even notice it. There's an encroachment of military thinking that seeps into our everyday lives here in Hawaii, and then it becomes normalizing. Public demonstration of a striker vehicle. Why and I intervened to the university, there was tremendous pressure to let the military in, to develop a university-affiliated research center for the Navy. Happy holidays. Just some information on uh, what's going on with the university and classified research. Our university may Thank become you. part of developing weapons of mass destruction. So we are in front of President McLean's home soliciting his guests for a holiday party people gave their life 
to the Vietnam War are still suffering from Agent Orange. So that's one Sean, byproduct of here. military and university. Hello, sleeping in the same bed, I guess. That was the University of Hawaii? Yeah. The University of Hawaii conducted tests with Agent Orange for the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War, long after its cancer components were revealed. So this is why my people here in Hawaii has so much cancer. There's so much cancer rates. Every one of our families been rocked and shattered by cancer. To my great grandma dying, to my my cousin dying at 16 years old from cancer. 16 years old. Healthy boy played baseball his whole life. 16 year old died cancer. Everybody in Hawaii, every family has been shattered by cancer. And a lot of these cancers have been instigated by these different research that the different corporations and universities have, and military have done in Hawaii. We are just a test ground for their warfare and it's a way to remove the natives. That's why us, we never have birth defects. Our children come out so beautiful, so healthy. And it's not until we get poison, drugs, meth, or we get meth, or, um, or the vaccines, and we, then we, we get all of these problems. And it's, they're, they're deploying different tactics whether it's on purpose or not on purpose and we are getting affected by it the problem that you started in the first actions contradict you can't be critic christian written words now what's your plan for the providence you promised us to serve launch your missiles and the finished missions killing off the young let's run them down Mike Hammond, Executive Director, Research Corporation, University of Hawaii. Look, Research Corporation, University of Hawaii. We were off campus, and those are where the default is you can't do it except on an exceptional basis. And, and most universities that have that, there's some sort of referral pro review process, some of which involves administrators, some of which involves the faculty. How do we dare even examine a policy that is so unfair and so unbelievably uh, uh, imposed on people who have no opportunity to talk about whether they want it? What right does our university have to do that? That's what the UARC is about, and that's what this is addressing. You know, and I think, I think the ethical issues here are primary. When you dump Agent Orange into a stream, it enters the food chain forever. When you bomb Makua Valley, the lead and unexploded ordinances enter the food chain forever. We can't have any more generational struggles like a UARC. We have Waikane, we have Pakuloa, we have Pearl Harbor, we have Mauna Kea and Haleakala now. And how accountable would RCUH be to any university policy that we would make against classified research? Uh, the research corporation is a separate corporation. We have our own board. We have our own policies. We have nothing against the research. So even if the university were to ban classified research, RCUH could. 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 That's right. How, how, do, how, how do we address this as a university that has ethical and moral obligations to the people whose land this is? I, I, it, it makes no sense to me. Well, uh, Maynard, okay, I think we, we want to move on to the question. No, 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 no I think we'll move on, center is Whoa. in many respects no different than again. any other research by research RCUH could. 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 That's how, how, do, how, how do we address this as a university that has ethical and moral obligations to the people whose land this is? I, I, it, it makes no sense to me. Well, it may not. Okay, I think it may not, but who cares? Course, the university affiliated research center is, in many respects, no different than any other research center. There is a review prior to the execution of contract that it look was at, in, look the, at the, uh, the in my interest and also in. It's not Hawaiians. That's destroying Hawaii. We're the only thing that heals the land. We're the only thing that cries for the land. 
It's not us destroying our lands. There's not us there. The university's interest to pursue this research under national security, they would grant me permission to conduct that research. That's basically the process that the University of Washington goes through for its principal investigators who desire to do research of a classified nature. The reason most of us are here classified, is to classified. oppose the introduction or continuation of military research that has taken up so much of the land of Hawaii and destroyed so much of the land of Hawaii. That's why we're opposed to the UARC and these other areas of research. You know, we don't need a lot of percentage of research in order to develop weapons of mass destruction or technology that is uh, supportive of basically, um, you know, a, a policy, a governmental policy that has been used to kill a lot of people. Consultations that were promised to us are simply bringing in people from outside and telling us what they do. This is such a bogus, such a, this is an example of, of classified research in its it's all classified. It's all secret. You're not giving us the consultations. You're not listening to the community. You're not hearing what these people say. It's irrelevant what these guys do at their U.S. universities. It's irrelevant to our UARC issue. Exactly. Uh, just reading the exactly. Board of Regents minutes from November 18, 2004, in which Mr. McComas is named as a consultant on UARC. Is that true? Correct. I've been hired to explain yeah. uh, some of the uh, issues and problems that the University of Washington has had pertaining to UARCs. And I've also been hired to assist. So University of Washington has having problems with this UARC, but they want all of universities to pick up UARC, a corporation with classified technology. When has classified technology equaled Oh, not poisoning the land. Or non-nefarious. They call it classified for a reason. Any type of contract negotiations that the university uh, chooses to engage in with the Navy and the federal government. They're paying. So, they're giving <clears throat> anybody who says yes to the contracts. $75,000. We live in Hawaii. It's very hard to live in Hawaii. If somebody was going to give me $75,000 just to give them a job, like approve their job, and then most of, 9 out of 10 times, if you live in Hawaii, you're going to say yes. you money for the UARC and you come here and purport to be talking about the research at the University of Washington, you're, you're a fraud. You're, you're really an academic fraud. In September 2007, despite faculty and community opposition, look, you just witnessed a little portion of the meeting, not even the whole meeting. The University's Board of Regents approved the UARC plan, approved it. Even the, the faculty of the university were speaking in that way, it still was approved because it doesn't matter what you say. All that matters is the money. That's why they made money so important to us. It's embarrassing. Between 2002 and 2008, the Research Corporation of the University of Hawaii received $254 million in contracts from the U.S. Department of Defense. Imagine what I could have done for Hawaii with $250 million. What have they created with the 250 million? Because that's just contracts. That's not what they pay for every single a program. That's just what they made in contracts. Okay. 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 Okay.
The intention of the two industries that run Hawaii, militarism and tourism, is clearly the best example of the future that is projected for Hawaiians. You will be a servant. You will be in a position where you are subjected to someone else's power who is racially, ethnically different than you. Their vision of what Hawaii should be is being lived at the expense of the Hawaiian. This is the kind of development that's occurring in Hawaii over and over. Homes here are 10, 11 million dollars just to build their old piece of paradise where they cut up into one acre lots. It's all gated to keep out the natives. But again, they have access to the beach next to the resort hotel. I mean, the idea is to kind of capture this kind of, you know, give it a Hawaiian flavor. Yeah, something that's pa palatable for, uh, for those who, who settle here. Not a true example of what Hawaiians are about, but one that's just enough Hawaiian. Well, the Gerald Bisner says the simulation, simulation of the native presence always signals the native absence. You see, that's part of the creation of this fictional paradise also, is that, yes, we live amongst the ruins of the ancient Hawaiians across from the beach. We are protectors and stewards of the environment. It's all part of this, this uh, produced image of somehow being one with nature, being one with the environment. But in reality, again, we are the Hawaiians. The Hawaiians are removed from the area. The Hawaiians are banned from the area. And all that's kept are the artifacts of the Hawaiian, the archaeology of Hawaiian. It's a right to have those things protected to keep the Hawaiians out. And this is a great example of that. The Hokulia, they actually mark it on their website that you can golf next <laughs> to a, a, an ancient Hawaiian burial site. This is Pu'u Ohau. In this pool, there's many burials of our ancestors. You can see the, the grass and the sand traps that's already up on the pool. And these lots and this project start from 1 million up to 8 million and maybe even more. So this burial mound will have five houses with swimming pools and amenities for the rich and famous on our burial grounds. Those orange things up on the hill is plastic fencing that's used to mark off graves, um, hay owls. At one point seemed like the whole project was on orange fence. You know, they have caves up here that we have burials in. And some of these caves are a long distance and they have bodies all in there. They've actually approached the burial council to penetrate these burial tubes with their sewage, electrical and water lines. They're in open at least thousands of prayers. We never have a backhoe come over here and dig out the ground for burial. You, way back we never have metal was with wood and just hands. And you definitely know what's happening on Luau. They didn't cry when they put that person in there. They didn't pray if there's no body bound. They didn't do all of their prayers. Every stone that they didn't put on top of the body after, and every dirt was done with prayer. And they didn't open those prayers, and ain't nobody can fix that. When this is all done, just really look at what they found people here. They'll come in and clean up the trash for all these millionaires, cut their grass, water their lawns, survey jobs. This is arrogance. They should be reading this more than anybody. Historic sites is punishable under state law, chapter 6E, Hawaii revised statutes, and you will answer to the kupuna you desecrate. Also, and took your home for this desecration. So hopefully they don't feel so comfortable that, you know, it's all about the state law. We are going to go to somewhere someday when we leave this earth. State law not going to be there. The Location of burial blocking stru construction resting of the road intended to connect one of the historical sites. Or they are inadvertent. The degree to which one must go to prove that they are previously known, it, it just is a, an incredible amount of work to do this. The majority of these remains would be classified as inadvertent. These dots represent sacred sites. The orange represent not respected, built upon, and the blue symbolize sites that are known within properties that are owned in the American system of ownership. Every day in Kwana, developers are wiping away connectedness to our ancient past every day. called La'aloa. 
it means great sacredness. And so a subdivision is built here on lands that are named La'aloa from when we don't know. But we do know that along with many other properties on this coast, there are burials here. These houses in La'aloa uh, range from 500,000 through a million. Destruction of the Hawaiian way of life used to look like a missionary holding a Bible. This is what it looks like in the 21st century. If they can't get Hawaiians out of our lands one way, they'll get us out economically. Who can afford this of our uivi? There is no word for aloha aina in English. None. Real estate does not produce food, it produces profit. Based on my review, archaeologists archaeologists for the state asked the Hawaii Island Burial, Burial Council to relocate burials, blocking construction of one of the roads to Hokulia Resort. Of all of the available information, I believe the conclusion is clear that Site 6413 has never been recognized by archaeologists as, or should it now be considered primarily a burial complex, and that the human burials discovered beneath the habitation features G1 and G2 are and should be treated as legitimate inadvertent discoveries and not as previously identified features. We excavated almost the entire Defining a burial as inadvertent provides investors and government officials with a legal framework. See, you got to understand, this whole thing is a legal framework that typically leads to removal of Hawaiian remains, of Hawaiian people, of Hawaiian power, of Hawaiian businesses or construction on top of the graves. All of these are frameworks that they're using in our communities in order to push out. That's why there's more Hawaiians living in Las Vegas than in Hawaii. Entire structure, about 25 square meters of it, down to bedrock, and found over 200 artifacts and abundant food remains throughout that deposit. Look, there were 200 artifacts and abundance of food. It was a lava blister that we was visible from the surface. After we completely excavated this site, then we used a sledgehammer to crack open this. They used a sledgehammer. Look at the guy. Look at his face. He knows, like, oh, why did we? Ah, they really didn't want to talk about this. Blister, and that in so doing, we encountered uh, two. Look, fr look, look, bro. look, this guy, a descendant of a Hawaiian. Look, they he she had sex with one Spanish guy, Medeiros, and this is the child, you know, this is the grandson that came out. <clears throat> look, because he has the blood. Look, he's he boiling, look, he's holding his hand. He's in anger. Look at this guy right here. He's upset. He's like, this is personal for us. This is, this is like, you did that to my mother. We don't understand it, but it, we feel so much. We have so much pain that goes to us with these issues. Fragments of, of long bone and three other small fragments of human bone which are, are still in there. What action are we going to be taking? What charges are we going to be filing? That is some kind of desecration. I mean, there is no doubt. Because it's a burial, it's a burial. I got to tell you guys, that was hard for me to see here. And hear that. As a Hawaiian, in the work we do, it was very, very difficult. You're really lucky that this is modern times and you have the shield of the law. For coming here, disrespect us of who we are and do that kind of work. That's not work, that's desecration. We would have never found those remains. Well, you should have never done. be digging. Better to find them. Shut up, I'm talking. When I give testimony, you do not speak. When I am giving testimony, you know why? You know why? This is so damn serious. To sledgehammer 
Any site. That's not what we hire you for. You mean one and a half million dollars? You know, Council, please forgive me. When we come here and sit here as people, or I testify in public, we don't get paid a million dollars a human for to sit here. We speak in real deal from our heart, from our soul, from our Hawaiian, and who we are. So we, we, we get more weight on this imaginary scale. In all your years of disagreeing, okay? A serious, serious shit. Serious. So serious, serious. that it's easy to break the law. That when you touch our barriers, not only you touching them, you're just pounding with a hammer. And thinking that you can justify to me that because you had to bust them for fire? We're going to have to have that explained, Council. So I'm going to ask you, what is the machine here that's going to protect us, that's going to prosecute this? This is not acceptable. This is a million dollar contract, sledgy hammering our EV. The law says go in and data recovery and you open up a platform like an EV. Anyone else, that would be a violation. But it's not for that person because the department said go for it. That's the problem. Desecration is a word that implies that something was sacred and then it was desecrated. <gasps> Americans, Damn. both governmentally and individually, there is nothing that is sacred to Americans. Nothing. Nothing. My name is Tai Kavika Tengan. I'm a... Uh... That would be a violation, but it's not for that person because the department said go for it. That's the problem. Desecration is a word that implies that something is sacred and then it was desecrated. Americans, both governmentally and individually, there is nothing that is sacred to Americans. Nothing. My name is Tai Kavika Tengan. I'm an associate professor of ethnic studies and anthropology at the University of Hawaii. We are at Mokapu Peninsula, Kaneohe Marine Corps Station. This is the site of the single largest and longest running desecration oh of God. Native Hawaiian ancestral remains, or Iwi Kupuna, um, starting from the period of 1915 up and through the present, uh, over 3,000 sets of uh, individual human remains were disinterred from this uh, peninsula. With some of the construction projects that took place, including the creation of a golf course right up. This was all temples and burials. Now it's a golf course. On the primary burial site, those remains ended up in some 507 cardboard boxes in the Bishop Museum. When was the last time Evie were discovered here? I just got a notice last week. Last week? So it's ongoing? Yes. Anytime they put a shovel in the ground, just about, on this peninsula. Just outside of Pearl Harbor, where the U.S. military wanted to expand the sewer facility. They realized that the sewer facilities was right next door to a Hawaiian burial site. They asked the Hawaiians, would you rather us build and construct on top of the great site or would you rather us dig up your kupuna and move them to the side but in, in our hearts you know the others in a burial council well two evils the best of two evils was to remove our kupuna because there's no way we would allow them to to build a sewer facility on top of our kupuna but think about that the u.s military was even considering building their sewer facilities on top on a known burial site so it's very clear when people talk about somehow burials are protected under law, no, only certain burials are protected under law. It's very clear native burials are not. The military would not even consider building a surf facility at Punchbowl. But the right of the military to discharge their waste was more important than the religious and spiritual rights of the Kanaka to remain in the ground in their own homeland. As we remember the departed today, as we remember all veterans, oh, let our spirits be oh, crafted way. out of them. Oh, Let our hearts be compassionate and our minds clear and determined in honor and respect, not only today, but every day. And let us be dependent on our God. Oh, Native burial is always a target for the tourists or for the benefit of the military. So when people talk about this is, this is about the right of the military 
to prepare their soldiers well. Well, I don't know how golf gets into that question. I don't know how the expansion of your sewer facilities gets into that question of preparing your soldiers for battle. You can clearly see it's, it's beyond that. It's really about them controlling everything, dominating everything, even at the expense of our kupuna. So even you as a Hawaiian, you can't get evicted as Hawaiian even when you pass on. We're always, we're always at the threat of being evicted from our homelands, even when we're underground. Are you guys setting up for an event? A wedding? It makes you wonder what kind of people enjoy you know, do, doing these kinds of things again right to a sacred site or a bear, mass burial site. Getting to the larger issue of occupation uh, is, is one of the techniques for erasing indigenous peoples by denying their presence today is to show that look they're all gone and dead now we have their bones to show for it it denies the the continued persistence of indigenous peoples um, and in many ways uh, buttresses <laughs> this kind of narrative of the settler societies that came to replace them we really need to revive an, a critical analysis of colonialism and understand what settler colonialism is. It's not sort of extractive colonialism like you had the British in India taking out the resources and returning them to, to Queen England motherland. It's about implanting non-Hawaiians in Hawaii. Guys, you have to be doing favors. Enjoy your free job in Paris. Enjoy your you enjoy are your Paris. Brought to you by our 44 ancestors whose graves were desecrated. Uh, I'm Moses Haya, I'm the staff attorney with the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation. The EV for Hawaiians are our foundation. It's what we look to, what gives us the mana to continue to be Hawaiians in present day society. We're here today to protest the Hevra that continues with respect to the EV that had, prior to their disturbance, been at rest and at pull, that is where they belong. Under the ramp, in that enclosed area, is where our kupunas are being held captive. Our biggest issue today is they're opening their store, our kupunas are sitting there and they're just driving up and down over them. Okay, green. when you guys told them had EV on our land, why you guys never maintain them as what green? You see, you see. Oh, why well, you guys never do this? That's why. Oh, you guys never do that? That's why. What? It's fucking graves of our ancestors. Kings! The general public is not supposed to know where they are buried. You want us to go and groom it like punch bowl. I'm saying that's a western style of cemetery. Oh, come on. It was your ancestors. Oh, right. They didn't take very good care of them. No, no. 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 The general public is not supposed to know where this they are buried. This is what we get every you day want us to in our own like land. Vegetables. I'm saying that's a western but style of cemetery. But sometimes old people. Oh, come on. It was your ancestors. Oh, you didn't take very good care of them. No, no. All the holies. They're just like on disease. Yeah, they just spread where nobody like But we have the power to protest. You may not think that that makes a difference, but it does. It does. You are walking and shopping and getting your pajamas on a graveyard. Look, look, that's the fucking, this is how they act towards us. Uh, they start acting stupid, look, of, look, an African-American who's a cousin to the Hawaiian people is following this dumb-ass monkey desecrating us, even to today. Bananas. Go bananas! Go, go bananas! How much do they pay you for that? Oh, this is Jump of Love. It's all free? Jump of Love. You can do me a picture, just love bananas. Oh. Well, I like bananas, but I love junk. <laughs> so. Walmart only thinks of the bottom line. 
and that bottom line is how much money are they going to be able to make in order to do that they have to ensure that whatever they do is done as quickly as possible so they are up and running as quickly as possible mentality as Americans even as an indigenous Aboriginal American being called the black man he's has the same mentality as his oppressor because we are educated by our oppressors stay out of my Kupuna cemetery and I'll stay out of yours my name is Chris I've lived here for three years I have no answer Sisters here, but I definitely feel that this is an important issue, and I definitely support it. How would you like it if I take up your cemetery block? As far as you hollering and screaming, I don't want to Bruh, we went to their cemetery, Punch Bowl, any cemetery, and started digging them shit. We would get shot. They would shoot us and laugh and say, what stupid thing were you doing digging up the bones? 